In today's Cubase Quick Tip, I'm going to show you how to use the sidechain feature in order to sidechain compress and sidechain other things as well. So the first one, the King Daddy, <laughs> is to sidechain compress. And that's very popular among uh, EDM and elect electronic music. And two of the main ways that people do uh, sidechain compressing is to sidechain the kick to uh, synths or sidechain one of the important parts of the song to other parts of the song, such as, let's say, a vocal is very important and there's uh, synthesizers and other stuff that's kind of in the same frequency range. Uh, you can side chain the signal of the vocal to turn down the other elements of the mix using a side chain uh, compression. Um, so I'm going to break it down by showing you with my setup here. I have a kick drum right here, very basic. And then this is being sent to uh, my synths as well as my bass instruments. And this plugin right here, this is on my bass, uh, bass group. And whenever you use plugins that can use a sidechain feature, it's going to have this little symbol at the top here. So it's going to look like this. You need to activate that sidechain uh, input. So that can be, uh, I'm going to pull up a number of compressors. So uh, Steinberg has their normal uh, compressor here. This has the feature. They also have uh, various other, like let's say, I think Wave C1 works in Cubase as well. Yep. So third party plugins will also have this. Uh, not all of them, like, uh, let me pull up a VC. This one here is supposed to have some kind of side chain ability. I do not have that function on here. So we have a compressor plugin on the bass, and all my bass elements are going to it. And the kick and the bass both have a shared frequency range, anywhere from like, uh, I don't know, 400 hertz and below. The main part that I'm trying to make room for is the punch of the kick, which is roughly at 100 hertz and below. And I'm trying to make room for that uh, in the mix by taking it away from the bass. Okay, so I have a section here where there's kick and some bass uh, playing at the same time. And I'm going to use this uh, analyzer here to show you the frequency range. So in this case, the kick, there's a lot of low end. It's uh, heavy at about 67 hertz and 33 hertz. So that's a lot of low end. The bass, not so much that low 30 range, more so towards the, the 100 range. And it's not clashing so much with the frequencies, but I still just want to get that bass kind of out of the way every time the kick hits. It helps the song just have that flow and energy uh, to it. So we have the compressor on here. We have activated the side chain. And uh, we're going to go to the kick. And we're going to go into here, which is the sends. And we're going to add a new send. And it's going to be listed under side chains. And in this case, we have base insert one, the tube compressor. So now we have to activate that. And let's have another listen. And I'll make this a lot more dramatic.
So you can hear it has that nice pumpy feeling. Uh, that's one of the ways to do it. You can use a number of compressors. Um, I like to use uh, the vintage compressor on bass kick drum stuff because you can add the drive. There's some character, a character knob. Um, it has just kind of a, a nice warmth to it as well. It's not just doing the side chain compression. If I needed something that was a little bit more clean and just doing the pumping, getting the sound out of the way, I would just go with uh, the regular uh, Steinberg compressor here because this is very clean and very digital uh, and it's good to go. So the second part to the side chain compression, again, is taking something that's important. Let's say you have a vocal uh, at the chorus and there's lots of stuff going on in the chorus. You would go to your vocal wherever it is. Let's say it's this one here, or no, that's, uh, let's say it's this here. I would send my vocals to other things that are not quite as important and don't need to be right in up front and center in the mix. So you can send it to your synths and it'll it'll uh, turn down your synths slightly or a lot or have a pumping effect, however much you want to go with, uh, whenever the vocals come in. And that can be handy, it can be creative, it can be all of the above. Another way to use side chaining to your advantage in a mix, either creatively or otherwise, is you can use an expander. And what an expander is, is it's kind of like the opposite of a compressor. It's whenever uh, something is, in, in this case, with when you're using side chaining, whenever the side chaining is triggering, it's actually opening the volume. And when it's not having a signal uh, side chaining it, it's actually closing the signal. So it's kind of like opening a gate whenever there's signal. So in my demonstration here, I have a snare drum and a percussion loop. And the percussion loop on its own is actually pretty busy and has a lot going on. So, like it's groovy, it has uh, all the elements there that I would want. However, it's a little too busy for what I have in the song. And what I'm doing is I'm triggering the snare drum to open this gate, this expander, whenever the snare hits, it opens it up for a little bit and then it lets the uh, percussion loop go through. So there, here it's a little bit more dramatic. So again, we're using the signal of the snare to trigger the expander on the percussion loop. And every time it triggers, it's actually opening up and letting the volume come through from the percussion loop. So here I'm using the expander in a kind of arrangement type of situation. You can also use the expander for more creative things like uh, I don't know if you have like a delay and a reverb on something, you might want to open up the volume to the, to the delay or the reverb when uh, another element in the mix comes in. I don't, I don't know, you can get uh, pretty creative with this. Um, so that is that. Another common thing to do is to uh, sidechain compress some of your, let's say, uh, vocal reverbs and delays. So you might want a very rich and full delay and reverb on your vocal or some other element. And uh, you want it to be nice and lush, but it's actually sometimes going to be getting in the way to the actual raw signal of that vocal. So I've pulled up a vocal here and we will look at what sends effects we have. So there's ping pong delay, vocal reverb. We're actually gonna exaggerate these. And because I have automation, it's actually snapping to the automation on this track. And I, what I have to do in order to change it is to disable the read automation function here 
and now I can manually adjust it to whatever I want. So we're going to uh, extremely exaggerate these effects here and hear what they sound like. Ooh, baby, 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 baby. So nice and lush. But like I mentioned, it's kind of somewhat getting in the way to the actual vocal, uh, the raw vocal, and you might want that to be nice and intelligible so that people can hear what uh, the vocalist is saying. So we're going to go to the ping pong delay and add a normal compressor, open it up, and then also I think it was vocal reverb, and we're going to add that as well. Then activate the side chain on both of these. Then go to my vocal, open the sends tab, add a new send to the side chain, ping pong delay, as well as the vocal reverb. Now, I'm gonna have to do some adjustments. Release, let's go peak. We don't want this. So there you can see it's a little bit more tamed when the vocals are actually in, and then when the vocals are done, the effects kind of slowly get brought up. And if we exaggerate it again, let's go with a high ratio. I love you so. so that's a little bit dramatic of a change. <laughs> uh, if we reverse that, let's go with something like this. A little bit longer of a release so that it's not so obvious that the, that the, uh, the volume is changing. change the threshold so it's not so as extreme so that's pretty good that's probably how I would mix it in a song so those are my side chaining tips uh, in Cubase uh, I've used all of these methods before in a mixing situation as well as in a music production situation, uh, using it for creative purposes um, or for like, uh, like this one here. This is a little bit more of a strategic, I got to get my vocal effects tamed when the vocals come in. It's like a little bit more surgical, but you can also get a little bit more creative and do... Uh, fancy fun stuff with the expander or the compression uh, so yeah hopefully uh, you got something out of this and uh, leave a like if you did and uh, hit that subscribe button you know you know the drill <laughs> uh, yeah anyways thanks for watching take care see you in the next video and bye bye